Well, now, you know, after some 20 years of presenting these awards, um, the One World Media Awards, it's not surprising that those in the office uh, may occasionally think they really need somebody new. But I was a bit put out when I was told that the person they had in mind was a young man who'd made his name on YouTube, not just recreating Radio 4 in four minutes, but Channel 4 News in four minutes. A man who's stolen, apparently, my signature characteristics to raise laughs. Not that I know that I have any signature characteristics, but still. I'm assured he is simply the amuse-bouche and that I remain the main meal. Let's see. Please welcome to the stage comedian Jake Yap and a piece written specially for this evening, Foreign Correspondence in Four Minutes. Wow, that's some time. Yeah, please, yeah. please, yeah. I mean, well, you've got that right anyway. Please. What about the socks? No, I haven't got the bicycle oh, clips. Man. I've got nothing. Oh, you can look, I mean, come on, let's have it. A... There you go, yeah. nothing. Yeah. I've got no, nothing, I've got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Please don't thump me. Okay. <clears throat> this is terrifying. Terrifying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, more terrifying for me. Thank you. And breaking news now in Tripoli, where Michael Haggis joins us. Michael, what's going on? What's going on is I forgot my phone charger which doesn't make any difference because I brought the wrong travel adapter so I couldn't plug it in anyway. What with the jet lag, John, and the endless security checks at the airport and then having to walk miles to the hire car in stifling heat, I can barely stand unaided now, let alone give you the first idea of what's going on. Still, I'll stick myself in front of this huge pile of smouldering rubble describing some of the lowest ebbs of humanity while people sit and watch me on their televisions at home eating a microwave lasagna and going... Terrible, that. <laughs> One wonders, John, sometimes if it's worth it. One is trying to bring the truth out to raise consciousness and perhaps even to affect change. But of course, amid that, there's a huge swathe of people watching simply because they're seemingly unable to imagine the horror of a scene unless there's someone from their country standing in front of it like some kind of morbid, jingoistic, rubbernecking national selfie. Back to you. Michael Haggis in Tripoli, in need of a lie down and a phone charger. Now, in a, a town you've never heard of, uh, in a country that you probably think is in Africa, but is actually in South America, there it is, on a handy map the graphics department knocked up this afternoon, drug cartels are responsible for the murder of almost everybody there. Our newest reporter, without too much in his pension fund, has been sent out there after signing an extensive waiver to go and dodge the bullets in the hope of getting a good appraisal. He joins us now via an app on his phone, <laughs> making it pretty pointless for him since he's basically a talking pixel. <laughs> Stephen, are you there? Stephen? I, John, I'm standing <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> Such a pity he'd been rehearsing that all day. Oh well, we'll put it on the website. <laughs> the BBC's chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, has been reporting from the front line for over 30 years. But some bright spark in commissioning thought we'd get this jumped up idiot off of YouTube to present this natural world type of documentary about life in Virunga in a way that's supposedly more down with the kids. Shells Portillo presents, fuck off, I'm from Virunga. <laughs> I quite like Virunga, it's like quite good and nice and that. And guess what? The people, it's just like us and everything. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, cool. I mean, that's the sort of thing the kids want, isn't it? In it, okay. <laughs> You're still rolling? Okay, I'll do the outro. Okay, hey, no worries. Virunga is sick, man. This is shells out. Okay, okay, cool. Now, for over 65 years, <laughs> Gaza has made the headlines. And for about the same amount of time, so has our senior correspondent, Bernard Rush. He joins us from there for this special report. 
People often ask me, uh, what gives me the drive at my age to get out there and cover a big story? People praise my devotion to journalism, but the real truth is that those bastards in London didn't give me the job as anchor. <laughs> so here I am in some shithole, putting my one clean shirt on my stinking body, hasn't been washed in over a week, brushing my teeth with lager, and going through a really awful divorce actually, <laughs> mainly via Skype. <laughs> so while all the young journalists half-heartedly chat each other up in the hotel bar, every permutation exhausted, I'll be in my room trying to download wrestling videos on dial-up. Such glamour. Mummy and Daddy never came and got me. Incidentally, I think the bosses in London made a big mistake not making me the news anchor at Heathrow. Uh, on my way out here, one man recognised me and shouted, Anchor! at me as I went through security. John. Let's go live now to Stephen Payne in Finland for a froth piece about Santa Claus. Yes, come December, blah, blah, blah. Children from all over the world, blah, blah, blah. No chance of even a sniff at an award here, blah, blah, blah. Why couldn't I have got a volcano? Half-heartedly puts on red hat for the throwback to the studio. We turn now to China for one brave reporter's story about the spread of a virulent fever that's affected news editors worldwide. The need for sexier footage. <laughs> footage fever. In the past, when editors showed symptoms, you simply gave them their shots and they went away happy. Now, though, it seems a new strain has afflicted them, which is more resistant. Now they're only happy if their reporters have one foot on each tectonic plate as they move apart, if they're sitting on the barrel of a firing tank or dodging gobs of lava as it rains down on them. That's why I'm standing waist deep in this vat of sulfuric acid with an approaching buffalo stampede in the background, halfway between North and South Korea wearing a hat covered in dollar bills and a Thai mate from Semtex filming endless drone shots like every other fucker nowadays. <laughs> John, have a word. So there they are, our foreign correspondents dealing with the demands of news editors, the ambivalence of viewers switching over to watch Britain's Got Talent while they risk life and limb, and the pressure from friends and family begging them to retrain as an accountant. <laughs> On behalf of all of us, to you precious few who are allowed to wear sportswear during the news, sincerely, thank you and good night. Jake, yeah.